Welcome back to another episode of Varsity Views Inside the Huddle Edition brought to you by Keon Sports. I'm Jax. And I'm Darian. And let's get right into Week 6's Top 5 Games of the Week. Coming in at Game number 5, we have Buckeye versus Holy Name. We had Buckeye a couple of times last year. They have a great offense, so let's see what they could cook up this game. First quarter, Buckeye would start off with a 14-yard rushing touchdown from quarterback Case Murray to go up 6-0 because of a missed point after. Right after, Buckeye would respond once again with a 59-yard touchdown pass from Murray to Austin Heyer. This would result in a 12-0 score after a failed two-point conversion. So first quarter, Buckeye coming out firing versus Holy Name. Hey, man. They got as long as they, they got to get their two point conversions and their field goes up. <laughs> Some that could really cost you in these games early, but at least they at least they scored early. So, yeah, in the second quarter, Buckeye would do a fake punt, which would lead to a twenty one yard screen pass touchdown to Troy McCann. This gave their lead nineteen to nothing. Holy Name would finally get on the board after quarterback Andrew Cole would have a ten yard passing touchdown to Nick Nemeth, making it nineteen to seven going into the half. So. Good for Holy Name to get on the board, going in the half, maybe get some momentum coming out in the third quarter. Hey, as long as they have a good talk at halftime in the locker room, they can come out. We've, we've seen it. Yeah, we I mean, last week Holy it. Name got their first win, so they're trying to keep keep that keep that going. And they got their first win on a comeback. <laughs> so in the third quarter, Holy Name would go three and out, and that would lead to a Buckeye one-yard rushing touchdown by Gage Nagy. This would give Buckeye the 26-7 to lead. Holy Name would respond, though, once again in the third quarter with another Andrew Cole touchdown pass to this time William Dix Jr., 26-14, to heading into the fourth quarter. So Holy Name, they're sticking around. They're, they're really they're giving it to Buckeye right now, trying, yeah, to, trying, to, trying to get in their head. They're really not out of the game yet. No, not this at all. It's still a winnable game going into fourth. Very much. Holy Name punter would be tackled in the end zone for safety, though, in the fourth quarter, giving Buckeye the lead 28-14. to Buckeye would then get the ball back and kick a 35-yard field goal to go up 31-14. to And then Buckeye Gage Nagy would have a 79-yard touchdown run to make it 38-14. to That would be the final score, Buckeye coming out on top, 38-14. to The player of the game was Gage Nagy, Buckeye running back with two touchdowns. So holy name, couldn't get it done. The Buckeye offense was just too strong in the end. Great job by Buckeye. I mean, hey. this is what we've seen from them all the time. Great they're, offense. They're a really good school. They play great football, and the coaching staff that's over there, they do their job oh, very well. Oh, 100%. If you'd like to learn more about this game, please go to keonsports.com and go look for the author Jacob Stahl. He wrote a great article and got to see this Buckeye high-flying offense in person. Coming in at game number four, we have University versus Gilmore. In the first quarter, we had University's quarterback Jackson Bowling, who had a three-yard touchdown, giving his team a 7-0 lead early. Then, University would force a fumble on the kickoff. They would get a two-yard touchdown, making it 14-0. That's, that is, hey, that's how you start that off a game fast. right there. That is fast, right? Then, Gilmore's quarterback, Cooper Pantek, with a 58-yard touchdown to Lars Bromberg, giving their cutting that deficit in half a little bit. It's 14-7 now, and that was just in the first quarter. <laughs> hey, we got, that's some action. Lo- yeah, we love action. to see action in the first quarter. In the second quarter? We had Gilmore turn over on downs. University would hold penalty, led to a safety, and it would be 14-9. Dang, this is the second game with a safety? <laughs> we don't get too many of those. <laughs> but, hey, if you Gilmore, you got to you gotta get it by any means right now. Then Gilmore's Pantech would have a five-yard touchdown to Sean Dillard. And the two-point conversion, they tried to go for it. It did fail, but the score would be 21-14, to 14, and that would be the score going into halftime. Now, I'm not going to lie. Going into the half, Gilmore got up hey, the lead. They they came back on them. They're ahead now. Looking good for Gilmore. Yeah, outdoing them with two touchdowns in the second quarter to their one. So it's like, or really none, honestly. Yeah, and they also added that safety. So, yeah, man, that safety. <laughs> listen, that safety is probably gonna come in so clutch towards the end of the game. <laughs> Coming out of halftime, neither team was able to score as they were extremely relentless on the defensive end, trying to just. I mean, it's the third quarter. We went you, from a lot of offense to a lot, a lot of, defense. of defense. Real, real <laughs> fast. Like, if you're Gilmore and you just realize what you just did in the uh, second quarter because they was getting smoked a little bit in the first. So you got to come out and hold your lead by any means. Going into the fourth quarter, Gilmore pants head to Brody Lennon for a 44-yard touchdown. But the point after was blocked, so the score would be 21-21. to 21. 
Now we have a tie game. <laughs> now we have a tie game. I love tie games going into fourth quarter. <laughs> you know this, bro. University quarterback Bowman with a 50-yard touchdown run, giving his team the lead 28-21. to 21. Oh, it's, it's, it's getting serious. It's, getting, it's starting <laughs> to get serious now. But University will play some great defense, go back on offense, and get a 21-yard pick six from Cameron Shipman. Talk about safety. That man <laughs> got hands. Like, <laughs> took it 21 yards. University would go up 36-21, to 21, and that would be the end of the score as University would be on top. Player of the game would be University's quarterback, Jackson Bolin, who had three rushing touchdowns. If you guys would like to read more about this, make sure you guys go look up the author, Tony Bogan, on KeonSports.com. He wrote a great article. Make sure you guys go leave a comment and go show him some love. That was a good game. That yeah. was solid. That was a good turnaround. <laughs> yeah, hey, University gave up the lead a little bit, but they responded in the fourth quarter well. And with that, coming into game number three, we have Westlake versus Fairview. First quarter, first play of the game. Westlake quarterback Sam Bruchetti would have a 70-yard touchdown run on the first play, like I said. This would give Westlake the 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Westlake would then get another touchdown, this time a one-yard touchdown run from Drake, Jake Ostrowski, and make the lead 14-7 to heading into the second quarter. So Westlake coming out firing. Buddy. Fairview can't find anything early on. These first quarters for these games <laughs> so far have been extremely eventful. Like <laughs> that's, these kids, yeah, these kids hey, are that, efficient. That's what you like to see. But in the second quarter, Fairview would find the end zone. Fairview quarterback Burke Lowry would have a touchdown pass to Sav- Savijan Harris to make it 14-6. to Westlake, though, they weren't having it. They would respond with a Chase Kelly 34-yard touchdown reception and go up 21-6. to Fairview would then do a fake punt which led to a Burke Lowry one-yard touchdown run, making it 21 to 12. But like I said, seems like Westlake just keeps responding. Ostrowski would have a touchdown run and make it 28 to 12. Westlake heading in to the third quarter. So at half, I mean Westlake fu- just giving response after response. Let's see what happens here in the third quarter. Well, in the third quarter, both offenses struggled. It was another one of these games where the defenses came out of halftime, made their adjustments, and nothing could be done. That leads to the fourth quarter where Westlake would start off with a 39-yard field goal, making it 31-12. Fairview's quarterback, Burke Lowry, would have another touchdown run, making it 31-18. But Westlake just keeps responding as Bruchetti would have a 38-yard touchdown pass to Caden Cole, making it 37-18. And once again, Fairview responds this time with another Burke Lowry touchdown run, making it 37 to 25. That would end being the final score of the game: Westlake 37, Fairview 25. The player of the game was Westlake running back Jake Ostrowski, who had 102 yards and two touchdowns. But like I said, I mean, these teams just started going back and forth. They neither had an answer for each other in the uh, fourth quarter. After the third quarter was a stalemate. Hey, I mean, once you go behind the eight ball early, you know, if they don't go behind the eight ball in the first quarter, this game we probably gotta, ends a little different. It might, this game might go to overtime if they could have did something in the first quarter. Absolutely, and that hurts a lot of teams. Clearly, it's hurt a couple teams so far. <laughs> like teams scoring two touchdowns in the first quarter, and it's like ah, now we gotta, <laughs> now we gotta catch back up. You feel me? You gotta play a lot of defense. Yeah, and if you'd like to learn more about this game, go to KeonSports.com and look for Vince McKee as he was the one. Covering this game, boss man. That's the OG right there. (laughs) Coming in at game number two, we got Padua versus North Royalton. This, I ain't gonna lie, this this game was pretty nice. (laughs) This game was pretty nice. Padua starts off with running back Roderick Love, who had ended up with a two-yard touchdown, as now Padua's up 7-0. But Padua would score again, as Roderick Love would have an 86-yard touchdown run. 14-0 14 nothing, just like that. Again, another multiple an, games like another this. Another team who's up two touchdowns in the first quarter. <laughs> Not only that, this man, Roger, went for 86 yards. <laughs> that man must have been out there like a bullet because then nobody touched him on the way down. In the second quarter, we got action from North Royalton as North Royalton quarterback Joe Kenny to Luke Koprowski with a 28 yard touchdown. Now the score is 14 7. Padawa is still up. But for how much longer? 
because North Royalton's Joe Kenny would have a one yard touchdown run, but North Royalton would fumble the snap on the point after, and the score would be 14 13. Padua would remain with the lead going into halftime. This is an eventful first half. First quarter was all Padua. Second quarter was all North Royalton. Yeah, this second half is going to be entertaining. Ooh, but I'm ready. Coming <laughs> into the third quarter, Padua running back. Love, once again, Roderick Love with a, another 86-yard run touchdown. Where is he getting all these yards from? <laughs> like it's like hey, just, he's a stud. He's a stud. Bro, he is just getting the rock, and they just it look, he's probably really good at tag. Cause don't nobody touch this man, tag. bro. Tag. Like you don't just do two 80, 80 plus yard runs. They're both. They were both eighty six yarders. Yeah. Literally, like this is crazy. And then Padua would have another touchdown right after that. The score is now twenty seven to thirteen. They were crazy in the first. I don't think they liked their performance in the second, but they came out the third <laughs> firing. <laughs> Going into the fourth quarter, North Royalton is coming back. They would score a touchdown, and the score would be 27 to 20. North Royalton does have a chance. They mm-hmm. do have a chance. But they fumbled in the end zone after a deep pass. Padua will recover it, and North Royalton, they, ah, bro, they just couldn't do it, man. They just couldn't <laughs> they do it. They got so many chances. They had so many chances. They threw an interception. That was game over for them. As Padua will walk off with the win, 27 to 20. Player of the game would be running back Roderick Love, who had 250 yards. And majority of that came off of two 86 yard runs, which is crazy. <laughs> and he also had three touchdowns as well. He was player of the game for us. If you guys want to go check that out, make sure you guys go to keonsport.com. Look up Aninas Hines. Just a great number game two on the board. And but with that, let's head into game number one. Avon Lake versus Amherst. Oh, yeah, I'm ready for this. This game number one, baby. <laughs> this, Let's get to it. This was a game. First quarter, Amherst quarterback Cole Norris would score a rushing touchdown, making it 7 0. Avon Lake would respond, though, as Nelson would run in for a 23 yard rushing touchdown, making it 7 6 after a missed point after. Amherst would respond with an interception on the Avon Lake's next drive. So, Good first quarter. We got close to a tie game. I missed extra point. That could hurt him in the long run. Every extra point hurts in the long run. <laughs> Failed two-point conversions, all that counts. <laughs> in the second quarter, Avon Lakes, Jake Bovo would score a seven-yard rushing touchdown, making it 13-7. to Avon Lake, Derek McCrum, wide receiver, would then score a 27-yard rushing touchdown, making it 20-7. to So Avon Lake getting some momentum, building up that lead. That's what you want to see if you're an Avon Lake fan. Amherst would respond, though, with quarterback Norris throwing a 14-yard touchdown to Jacob Kraft, making it 20-14, to and that would be the score going in the half. So we got a close game here, heading in the half. Amherst gets some momentum going right before the half. Hey, man, this is already a good start to the game. I don't know how these teams still in the first quarter. We got action in every first quarter. Sometimes you don't <laughs> get that. Sometimes yeah, you no, don't get a lot that. of weeks you don't get that. Third quarter, though, it was all defense early on in the third quarter. That was until late in the third quarter when Amherst quarterback Norris threw a 58-yard touchdown to Eli Solak to even up the game at 20. Say, hey, fourth quarter, we're going in tied. Yeah, you know how I love my fourth quarter. (laughs) Zero to zero. This score is zero to zero at this point. (laughs) That's true. You just got to forget about everything. Literally, who's going to outscore who? (laughs) Heading into the fourth quarter, Avon Lake's Jake Bovo would score another seven-yard rushing touchdown making it 26-20 to 20 after the PAT was blocked. Avon Lake, though, would then respond with a McCrum 8-yard rushing touchdown once again, and the two-point try was intercepted, making it 32-20. to 20. Amherst, though, they're not backing down. Nine-yard touchdown pass to Williams, making it 32-27. to 27. Amherst just couldn't get it done, though. That would end up being the final score. Avon Lake comes out on top 32-27 to in a shootout, a close game, what we love to see. And the player of the game was Avon Lake wide receiver Derek McCrum, who had two rushes for 35 yards and two touchdowns and also had three catches for 60 yards. Hey, man, this was a very nice ending coming out of the third quarter. The fourth quarter was active. Yeah. Fourth quarter was active. That's what you love to see in these high school football games. But if you'd like to learn more about this game, please go to keonsports.com and look up the author, Lindsay Reitz. She wrote a great article and saw our number one game of the week, so that's always enjoyable. Absolutely. <laughs> Appreciate and with, with that, 
we're going to head into the player of the week, our player of the week, in our opinion. Talk Ma- to me, Jax. Medina quarterback, oh. Dan <laughs> Stoddard. 301 total yards and six touchdowns. I mean. Bro, someone sign this man. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to see if he's about to go somewhere, man. He, he's unbelievable. I almost gave it to Roderick Love because he had a heck of a game, those two 86-yard rushing touchdowns, but... I mean, Dan Stoddard just continues to make, maybe we just gotta give it to someone else because it was the he's, six touchdowns. he's gonna put these he's gonna put these numbers up every week. It was the six touchdowns, man. <laughs> it's so hard to pass on six touchdowns with three hundred plus yards. Like you don't do you don't really pass that up. So I ain't mad at it, but man, someone signed this man. <laughs> he's a bad man. In the words of Mark what would he go? Hey, hey yo mama. <laughs> There go that man. <laughs> Jackson had that baby locked in for real, and we mean that with Dan because, hey, he's a superstar right now. Yeah, 100%. Appreciate you guys tuning in to week six of Inside the Huddle. Make sure you guys keep up with us. If you guys have missed any previous episodes, make sure you guys keep tagging in with KeonSports.com. You can find all our episodes there. But until then, we're going to catch you guys next week. I've been your host, Darian. And I'm Jax. And we're going to see you all. Peace.